Greetings, dear friends! I will present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Kia Sorento. If you opt for a mono drive, you have very little to worry about. The chances of corrosion of the spliners of the drives at the checkpoint are minimal. The CD joints with hole covers go for a long time. But it's definitely worth checking the backlashes and for any work involving the removal of drivers, do not forget to lubricate the splines. The original grease lasts for 3-6 years, but no longer. All-wheel drive cars, of course, also have a rear box, propeller shaft and magna clutch. And not a simple electromagnetic one, but with hydraulics, like Holdex. The most common problems are the wear of the rear axle suspension bushings, which leads to wobbling and shock at the start. Rear axle splines are also at increased risk. Masters strongly advise to renew the lubricant every few years if you do not want to change expensive enough parts. If you see traces of welding in the circle, then most likely someone tried to tighten the spline joints due to thermal deformation of the couplings. The solution usually helps for a short time. One of the most expensive problems is clutch failure. The new one is indecently expensive. The used one from 17-20,000 rubles. It is advisable to change the oil in the clutch every 35-50,000, depending on the intensity of off-road driving, although the pump is quite tenacious. Dirt in oil can only kill brushes, but they cause a penny. Unfortunately, the oil not only gets dirty, but also leaks out. Loss of oil through the front oil seal is fairly common, and given the minuscule volume, even a small leak can lead to clutch failure. Long-term neglect of its inoperability in this case can damage the clutches and bearings. Leaks are usually characteristic of high mileage or heavy and regular stress on the unit with heating. So there is a reason to ev evaluate the odometer reading and the condition of the body again. But leaks aren't everything. Also, the clutch basket breaks down at the junction with the shaft. This breakdown is typical, little depends on the mileage and sometimes happened already at 30-60,000. In most cases, a good welder is able to repair the part, high accuracy is not needed here, although geometry control and balancing would not hurt. Unfortunately, the basket is often overheated when inaccurate welding, and the installation of a curved part will damage the bearings of the coupling and even the rear gearbox. There are no particular difficulties with the manual gearbox, although the resource of the clutch and dual mass fly wheels could be higher. And the clutch hydraulic drive is not the most successful. Cases of master cylinder leaks have been recorded, although the cars are not so old yet. The automatic transmission is a variation on the A6MF2 six-speed gearbox made by Hyundai. Diesel cars and versions with a 3.5-3.3 engine are equipped with a more durable version A6LF2-3, structurally exactly the same, but with reinforced planetary gears and shafts. The boxes are very reliable, with a timely oil change at least once every 60,000 and a neat driving style, they are able to go through more than 250 or even 300,000 to major repairs and not annoy with minor breakdowns. For those who like to drive, they begin to brake much earlier. Already after 150,000 mileage, the resource of the torque converter lock-up linings is threatened, and an ultimately oil change quickly finishes the liner solenoids of the valve body. Worn boxes do not always show any symptoms. Very often, the wear of the solenoids masks the parallel wear of the box pistons, and in advanced cases, without a complete bulkhead of the mechanics, the valve body repair is useless. The list of minor age-related faults in the automatic transmission is quite wide. Here is the contamination of the speed sensors, the wiring breakdowns due to overheating, and even the breakdown of the differential splines due to corrosion of the output shafts. On cars with low mileage before restyling, there may be also childhood diseases like loose bolts of the under-drive hub, which is why its clutch package burns out with a mileage of up to 60,000. Spare parts of for A6 MF2 are not cheap. If the repair is more difficult than replacing the solenoids and well body sensors, then the final bill will easily go over 1.5 or 200. Do not rely on the budget for the brand. Fortunately, there are many used units, including those from passenger cars on which the A6 MF2 version is found very often and is inexpensive. Traditionally, for Korean and Japanese brands, both engines have weak catalyst and a cooling system, and the wiring and sensors are not ultra durable. After five years of operation, the health of the engine strongly depends on their condition. It's better to change the auxiliary systems in time than to fix the motor. Moreover, the 2.4 liter G4 KE series gasoline engines, most common on the Kia Sorento 2, have already turned out to be quite troublesome. 
In Russian conditions, the resource of this simple, in general, inline force is unstable. You can drive 300,000 and the engine will be in excellent condition, and it also happens that knocks and scuffs already at 70, 100,000 will force it to be turned off. The reasons for this trouble are not fully understood, but there are assumptions. Firstly, the aforementioned catalyst starts to dust early. This assumption is supported by the fact that cars in frosty regions and without additional heating systems are the first to suffer. However, re removing the catalyst is not a panacea at all. The version involved poorly chosen thermal regime and thermal clearances in the piston group is evidenced by the fact that seizures begin to grow in completely new engines. The trail of the piston shifting is clearly visible on the wall even with runs of more than 30,000 km for everyone, there are also small stretches on the loaded wall. And the degree of rubbing of the liner to 100,000 may already stabilize and not grow during runs up to 200,000 km or more. But this is how lucky. If the situation is unsuccessful, a piston with a short skirt can easily finish off the liner. A knock will begin and almost always an oil burner appears. Suspicions of piston overheating due to the lack of cooling oil nozzles are often expressed. But on earlier versions of the engines, there were substitutes for injectors holes on the lower head on the connecting rod, which performed the same function and the problem also occurred. But overheating of the motor itself almost always leads to the appearance of an oily appetite and piston knocking on a cold one. There is also an absurd opinion that this is somehow connected with the removal of counterweights on the metal cheeks of the crankshaft in later versions of the motors, but the version doesn't stand up to criticism, if only because unpredictable wear is characteristic of early versions of the engine. While there is only one good advice to all owners of Gaslin 2.4. If the motor is still alive, as can be verified by endoscopy during purchase and regular inspections, then do not forget to warm it up in the morning. Change oil and filters frequently and buy only high-quality consumables. While it's better to wash radiators a couple of times a season at a slight sign of an increase in operating temperature. The advice that sometimes occurs to use low viscosity oils perhaps would help the piston group during cold starts, but 2.4 liter engines have another unpleasant problem – with oil pressure. On the early 2.0 G4KD motors related to our patient and all G4KA motors, there was also an oil pump with a variable displacement and a block of balancing shafts. But due to problems with unstable oil pressure, the pump was replaced with a simple one, without adjustment and shafts. At the same time, the chain tensioner of its drive was changed, which made the motor much more reliable. But on the Sorant 2.4 oil pump remained two section and with balancers. This is due to the presence of a block or phase shifters and a high oil consumption for them. In general, kept an eye, keep an eye on the pressure and low viscosity oils are not recommended to be poured, preferably not thinner. SAE40, especially if you live in a hot region. On the pre-restyling, it is also recommended to update the oil pump assembly or at least put a new valve and springs with great effort. Aside from the oddities with the piston group and oil pressure, the motor is not so bad. Simple with an unexpected timing chain capable of traveling 150,000 km or more before being replaced. In warm countries, runs far beyond 300 are not such a rarity for it since the catalyst live there normally, while if you are not lucky, then it's well mustered in repair, spare parts are relatively inexpensive. There are no original pistons in the repair size on either the G4KE or, or the twin brother B12 from Mitsubishi, but the later has a non-original one with sizes up to 0.5. So the block can be simply wondered if desired. Tellingly, after a major overhaul, seizures often do not appear, most likely due to the fact that for most non-original piston groups the clearance is indicated a little more than the factory one. Or maybe the liner material in the native block is worse than that of the repair ones. Diesel engines D4HB 2.2 liters are somewhat more successful than gasoline engines, and there are quite a few of them on a Sorando. There are no problems with oil pressure and seizure, but there are many other problems. The fuel equipment is distinguished by not very successful injectors, glow plugs stack entirely, gas leaks into the crankcase ventilation system, a capricious EGR valve which, in the event of severe contamination and freezing in the open position, can completely clog the intake manifold. The timing change serves a little less than on a gasoline engine in the range of 100-150 thousand. When replacing, it is imperative to change the hydraulic tensioner, a malfunction of which easily leads to a jump of a chain when starting. The oil appetite appears in those who like to grab it well with a load. It is banal to overheat the pistons and grab the rings, and then the appetite progresses. 
Cone drivers do not have these problems, but the endoscope, as you know, will not hurt even if you buy a diesel Sorento. The turbine is reliable, but it works with a very high load, so the turbo timer or installing an additional electric pump in its cooling system would be very useful. Almost nobody does this, but if you buy a car for a long time, think about it. Leaks of a plastic valve cover at high mileage are a minor but unpleasant nuance. The intake requires attention due to increased vibrations, broken connections are a common thing. Besides, the inlet pipe from the intercooler is rubbed against the thermal casing and the cor corrugation of the wiring. The reason is not only unsuccessful laying, but also in the early failure of the motor supports, which entails an increase in the vibration amplitude. In general, if you understand that diesel is not only lower fuel cost and consumption in general, but also increased risks with fuel equipment and a more complex design than atmospheric gasoline, then you can safely take it. True, the box will have a hard time. The resource of the automatic transmission will be at the lower limit, but there is nothing to be done about it. The engine torque is 440 nm, even reinforced boxes can hardly hold such a gear. On this, information about the problems of Kia Sorento is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.